Research on the extension of human life produced results and fitness trends started as humanity tried to preserve their youth. God's Domain, a holographic game, came into existence and financial groups supported the guilds in game for stocks. In 2139, our main protagonist, Shai Feng, got his account deleted because he is against merging the Shadow Guild with other guilds. He is asked to sign the papers and receive 5 million credit points in a mansion. Later, Shai Fen drinks and complains about how they acquired the guild he worked hard for. He drinks and falls asleep. His phone rang, and he received a call from Blackie, telling him that the Shadow Guild was recruiting. Shai Fen exclaims that he was just fired and notice that he suddenly got younger. He checks his phone and notices that we went back 10 years. Who takes this as his second chance to take revenge? Blackie calls out to him, but Shafeng tells him that he won't join Shadow and that he will start his own guild. Blackie is worried about the cost of starting one. Shifeng tells Blackie not to worry and that he just needs 10 days to get the money. Shifeng buys groceries and gaming equipment. He then logs into God's domain. He arrives at the login page and meets Gabriel. Gabriel presented a list of jobs and Shai Feng chose swordsman. He registers as Yi Feng and then alters his appearance. Gabriel sends him out to Redleaf Town. Before he allocated most of his points to strength, but he will focus on agility this time. Blackie, a curse master, calls him, and Shai Feng tells him about a unique quest that gives out extremely generous rewards. It happens that there is one in Redleaf Town. Blackie is surprised that Shai Feng knows and accuses him of getting help from a beta tester. He then tells Blackie to come to Redleaf Town. He approaches a beggar, and he gets the quest of killing the Redleaf Town mayor, Cross. Shai Feng arrives at the town hall, where other players are lining up to get a quest from the mayor. Shai Feng made a deal with another player, exchanging hunting grounds information for copper coins. He uses the coins to buy tomatoes, making others laugh. Shifeng arrives in the mayor's office and throws tomatoes at Cross' face while trash-talking him. Cross becomes hostile and attacks Shifeng, but Shifeng blocks. Cross transforms into a werewolf, and the NPC guards attack him. Shifeng used his future memories to do this trick. The players also join in to attack Cross. Everyone coordinated their attacks and killed Cross. There are no drops or experience, and the players look for Shifeng. Shifeng is already left with the item. He gives the mayor's signet to the beggar who gave him the quest. He then receives massive experience points and extravagant rewards. He also receives a ring that makes his body lighter. He continues to level up his agility and sword stats. Later that day, Shefeng goes to the arena, where he meets Heartstabber, the leader of the Assassin's League, who challenges the arena's missions. Heartstabber borrows money from Shefeng, and Shefeng courses him to return 500% of it. They plan to challenge again, and Shai Feng does the same. Shi Feng starts the challenge, and he swiftly dodges the attacks of the goblins. Heartstabber thinks Shi Feng is a veteran. The goblins' attack pattern changes, but Shai Feng can deflect the bullets with his sword. Heartstabber is impressed by Shi Feng's control. The goblins' attack pattern changes again, but Shai Feng continues pushing forward. He reached the goal and received a silver coin and a sword skill. The others thought of stealing the reward, and Heartstabber smacked them. After getting the Thundering Flash, Shai Feng plans to train now. Shi Feng enters the Redleaf Forest. In God's Domain, the death penalty is heavy, wherein you drop a level and lose your equipment. He plans to attack a single wolf to start, but he accidentally falls down the cliff and into the den of the wolves. He immediately runs fast and gets rid of them in no time. He ended up in the Central Mountain Range where future forms mention that a secret treasure is at the top. After some time, he arrives at a waterfall and uses his agility and gravity ring to easily climb the cliff. Just then, a rock giant appears, but Shai Feng is prepared and uses an explosive berry to slow down the rock giant. He slashes the monster repeatedly until it crumbles. Shai Feng got lucky and got armor as a monster drop. He notices a cave and enters it. He discovers a boss monster and starts attacking it. The monster starts fighting back, but Shai Feng quickly dodges. He whittled down its health, but he didn't expect it to recover. He activates Thundering Flash to attack again, and it is more effective. The monster fights back by unleashing an AoE attack. Shai Feng dodges the flying debris and hides first. Later the monster entered a fatigued state, dropping its stats sharply. Shai Feng takes this chance and attacks the monster again. As he whittled down the monster's health more, the monster vanished and teleported behind him. It punches Shishi Feng, 
making him fly to the wall and deal great damage. Shai Feng counterattacks and manages to defeat the monster. The boss drops a shield and a skill parry. He then continues to climb the mountain. He reaches the top and feels something weird. He activated the hidden quest, which are special missions that will only trigger in a specific area and will be gone after it is completed. He enters a house and looks around, but there are no NPCs in the area. He goes to the top of the house, looks around, and discovers a mage tower. He enters the tower, and a mage welcomes him to the city in the sky. Shi Feng is shocked because this city disappeared during a war. The mage offers to make him stronger through a test. Shi Feng immediately accepts and chooses the hardest difficulty. The mage then starts the test, and specter warriors arise outside. Shi Feng leads them to a narrow area to defeat them one by one. As he reached the last stage, Spectre assassins appeared and attacked him from behind. But Shai Feng manages to fend them off and he counterattacks. He uses his environment to move fast and kill the monsters easily. He manages to defeat 500 monsters and receives a precious gold chest and a title. Because the mission is done, Shai Feng is teleported back to Redleaf Town. He walks into an alley and opens the gold chest. He obtains the magic sword, Abyssal Blade, that greatly improves the user's strength, but they come with a bad effect. He didn't bind it in the meantime and checked his other rewards, skill books for potions, and forging. He comes to the town square and sets up a small shop. Players are surprised by the quality of his items. They also gossip about the player who killed the mayor, leaving them no quests to do in Redleaf Town. Just then, Shefeng receives a call from Blackie and tells him to come to the town square. Suddenly, a haughty player appears and tries to bargain to buy everything Shi Feng has for one silver. Shi Feng refuses his deal and the player tries to attack him. Just then, Heartstabber and his group came and asked for all the equipment for 24 silver. Shi Feng agrees with the deal and also dismisses Heartstabber's debt. Blackie appears and they immediately leave for Darkmoon Valley. While they walk away, an angry flaming tiger watches them. Turns out he is from the Shadow Guild. On their way, Shefeng and Blackie encounter a blue-named monster, because they are rare. Shefeng hurriedly attacks the monster, but he only deals small damage. He fights back and Shefeng is surprised by its strength. Blackie supports by firing a magic spell, but it only deals a small amount of damage. Shefeng distracts it while Blackie continues to whittle down its HP. The monster attacks Shefeng, and he defends, but his sword is breaking. Shefeng kicks the monster away. He doesn't have a choice but to start using some moves. He dodges and opens a bottle of beer, then drinks it. Its effect is to lower levels of the enemies in his sight. Shi Feng starts attacking again and deals better damage now. He tries to make a finishing strike, but someone suddenly attacks him. It was Quiet Wolf from the Shadow Guild. Just then, the monster gigantifies itself and starts attacking Shi Feng again. Quiet Wolf tries to do a pincer attack, but Shi Feng gets in the way and the monster attacks Quiet Wolf instead. Shai Feng and Blackie continue attacking the monster, and they manage to defeat it in the end. The monster dropped a staff and Shai Feng gave it to Blackie. Meanwhile, Flaming Tiger scolds Quiet Wolf. Quiet Wolf informs him that Shai Feng is headed to Darkmoon Valley, and that there are elite monsters. Flaming Tiger orders everyone to move out. In a smithy, Shai Feng and Blackie trigger a quest related to forging. To retrieve the quest items, they set forth to the Crimson Start Mines. Shi Feng throws a smoke bomb at the kobolds, and Blackie attacks them with magic. Shi Feng tells Blackie to relax and keep attacking because the kobolds' visions are blocked. Blackie continues attacking and leveling up. Mikurate ore drops are rare, but with Blackie's luck, a lot of them fell. They continue attacking, and they gain a lot of experience and equipment. As they check on the drops, someone attacks Blackie from behind. They dealt a lot of damage to Blackie. Blackie fights back and deals great damage to Quiet Wolf. They try to attack him again, but Shai Feng counters them with heavy damage. Blackie is impressed with Shai Feng. Flaming Tiger arrives with his team. Shai Feng throws a smoke bomb at them, and he tells Blackie to retreat. Instead of chasing them, Flaming Tiger's group tries to level up by copying Shai Feng's method. Blackie is worried, and Shai Feng tells him that Joy attracts Storo. Just then, the smoke dissipates and the kobolds notice Flaming Tiger's crew. The kobolds attack them and kill them one by one. Flaming Tiger runs away from the kobolds, but Shai Feng confronts him. He attacks Shi Feng, but he disappears. Shi Feng attacks from behind and mocks Flaming Tiger. An angry Flaming Tiger attacks Shi Feng, but he always misses. 
Shafeng counterattacks with Thundering Flash and kills Flaming Tiger. Back at the spawn area, Flaming Tiger dropped his skill book. He received a call from Zhang, who removed him as a squad leader, which frustrated Flaming Tiger. Meanwhile, Shai Feng gets the skill book Flaming Tiger dropped. It is Windblade, a long ranged attack for swordsmen. Blackie discovers a rock that has only a 1% drop rate. Shai Feng claims that it will be useful in the future. They went back to the blacksmith and completed the quest. A hidden second quest appears to subjugate the kobold chieftain. The two arrive at Crimson Star and attack the kobolds on the way. After killing a lot of them, the chieftain appears. They have less than 20 minutes to kill it. Blackie worries after seeing the massive HP the chieftain has. The penalty for quest failure is harsh, so they don't have a choice but to defeat it. Shifeng brings out the abyssal blade and binds it. Shifeng's level dropped to zero, but he assures Blackie that he is now stronger. The chieftain summons kobolds. Shifeng tells Black to hide. The kobolds attack him, but he is still able to counter them all. The kobold chieftain attacks Shifeng, who dodges and uses a new skill, Phantom Kill, along with Thundering Flash, to bring down the chieftain's health. The kobold chieftain is enraged and fights back, but Shifeng dodges everything. Blackie suddenly attacks the chieftain, and it chases him instead. Just then, Shifeng uses a skill to bind the chieftain. It breaks free, but Shifeng deals with heavy strike. The chieftain counterattacks and summons familiars. Time is running out for Shai Feng. Even with low psychic power, he activates Nine Dragon Slash. He controls the abyssal blades, kills the familiars, and deals damage to the chieftain. As Shai Feng tries to deal with the last strike, he depletes his psychic power. As the chieftain approaches, Blackie suggests giving up. Shai Feng remembers his time in his past life and exclaims that he will rewrite his destiny. Along with his phantom, Shai Feng attacks the eyes of the chieftain and follows it up with slashes. The chieftain counterattacks, but it misses. Shai Feng uses his phantom as a platform and jumps forward towards the chieftain. He uses the wind blade and pierces the body of the chieftain, disintegrating its body. They manage to defeat the kobold chieftain. Blackie feels guilty about the free ride. Shai Feng suggests Blackie increase his agility next time. They had a lot of drops. Blackie's got a great skill book for crowd control. They equip the new drops they got. Later that day, they come back to the smithy and gain the forging skill and a title. As they proceeded to leave, the blacksmith noticed the abyssal blade. He stops them and tells Shi Feng is already causing a backlash on him. The blacksmith tells them that the curse is unbreakable, but they can weaken it. They need to find the lucky stones. Shi Feng tells Blackie to bring out the lucky stone. Blackie didn't know but it was the rock he picked up after their power leveling with the kobolds. The blacksmith reforges the abyssal blade with the lucky stone. He was able to suppress the curse. They leave the smithy, and Shai Feng receives a message from the player from before in Redleaf and invites them to a dungeon raid. They arrive at the Deathly Forest and meet Lonely Snow. They meet Lonely Snow's party, and they mock Shi Feng for being level 1. The abyssal blade's penalty is really harsh. Will Shi Feng be able to regain his levels? If you want a part 2 of this manhwa, let us know in the comments and make sure to like this video and subscribe. See you in the next video.